So when is a cracked crankshaft not actually a cracked crankshaft? I'm going to show you. But first, I'll give you the backstory on this so you know where this is all coming from. So this crank, this is a, a forged steel 440 crank, 1960s vintage, out of Kiwi's 446 pack engine. So if you remember last week, we brought the motor here and we tore it down. He and Mopar Al are, are teaming up on this build. Kiwi has a 68 barrel crude notch back four speed car that he's going to put this 446 pack in. And they're teaming up to, to put it all together. So brought the motor over here, tore it down, got a look at everything. And you can see that video. And after it was all torn down, the, the only thing left in the bare block was this crankshaft. So okay well let's look over this crank let's see what we got so as i'm eyeballing the crank i'm seeing a bunch of little marks in the journal surfaces right so a couple of them you know little check marks here or there like all right you know no big deal but then as i get to the three four journal right here i find that there are three cracks inside the journal that run parallel to the counterweight so i'm like okay this crank is cracked. This thing's junk. So I call up Kiwi and I tell him, hey man, you're gonna need a crankshaft. This thing's toast. Come over here and check it out. So Kiwi comes over, I point it out to him. He runs his finger over it, same way I did, and he feels the cracks. If you can feel a crack, man, it's done, right? So yeah, he feels it and he's like, no, oh, okay, I'm on, I'm on it, I'll get another crankshaft. Okay, so that's it, we call it a day. The next day, I says, all right, well, let me get this crank out of here and toss it in a scrap pile and so we'll move forward. So I take the crank up out of the motor and I lay it on the ground and or drop it on the ground. So listen to this. This is right, ready. Can you hear that? After the thud, there was a ring. This crank rings. All right. So when a crack shift cranks, <laughs> when, a crank, when a crankshaft cracks, it's generally because all of the springiness is out of, out of it. The crank, by its nature, has to have spring-like qualities. Because of all of the, the different forces that are on it, the torsional twisting, the impacts from the combustion process, all of the vibration and fine harmonics, the noise that the crankshaft is subjected to, if it's not spring-like, it'll crack. So I pick up a wrench and I'm like, listen to that thing. It rings like a bell. It's beautiful. It's perfect. So how could this thing have major cracks in one of the journal surfaces and still ring like that? It rings so well that Mopar Al can actually play Mary Had a Little Lamb on it. Al? That's a nice crankshaft. So now I'm looking this thing over and I'm like, how is this? And then I, it, I realized, oh, okay, one of the tip offs was that this crank is straight. This thing has had a lot of work done to it. It's had a lot of balance work to it. As far as I could tell, it has not been run since all this work was done to it. It has metal added to it. It's got extra holes drilled in it. It went through, somebody spent a lot of time making this crank right. But it's got marks on it, standard, standard. I measured it and it's standard, standard. So the journals have never been cut. And it's highly unusual to take a used crankshaft. So this is like a 1960s vintage crankshaft. It's unusual to have something like this, do all of this work to it, and then not at least cut the journals 10, 10, let's say, to give it a fresh surface. But this is standard, standard. This crank's been chrome. And then, of course, once I realize that, I look at it and I say, yeah, okay, this thing is chrome. The cracks are in the chrome, not in the crankshaft itself. Now, to tell whether it was the cracks were in the chrome on external and at internal, you'd have to have this thing x-rayed. If you had Magnaflux this, now if you sent this off to a machine shop and said, Magnaflux the crank, it would have come back cracked because the Magnaflux is gonna show the cracks in the chrome. It's not gonna show the actual 
metallurgy or the, the, the composition of the crankshaft itself unless it's x-rayed. So what do we do with this thing? Well, obviously now, we're, it's a beautiful crank. We're gonna cut 1010 and we're gonna send it back on a motor. This thing is actually, this, thing's ring, this crank rings better than any other crank I have in my life. Now, let's talk about the cracks for a second. And this should have been a tip off that it wasn't the typical thing. The cracks in this shaft that you can feel don't run in the cheeks and they don't run diagonally. Now, when a crankshaft cracks, typically the cracks are going to emanate right in this area here, inside of the journal, alongside the cheek here. And that's, that's the high stress area. So the crack will either be straight along in the radius, right, or alongside the cheek, or they'll be diagonal. And when they're diagonal, they'll generally follow the oil hole. The oil holes are drilled into these things in a diagonal way and it's the weak part of the crankshaft. So that's generally where you're going to find the cracks. These cracks on the other hand are straight across. So with that we know that this thing is good to go. Ten, we'll cut it 10-10 and we'll send it. And I'll, drop this, I'll drop this off at the machine shop tomorrow and let them work their magic on it. But before that we're going to have Al learn some new songs Al, do you think you could do Inagata de Vida on this? Not yet. Not yet? All right, he'll, he'll practice, and we'll, we'll get that for you guys uh, tomorrow. So that's it. I hope you got something out of that. you got to use all your senses when you do stuff like this. You have to use, you know, you, you got to inspect visually, right? Anything that's unusual, right, you got to really scrutinize. You have to use your sense of touch, right? You can feel the imperfections in this crank. Yeah. You have to use your hearing, you know, especially on something like a crankshaft, the ring. But then you also have to use some deductive reasoning. You have to throw some detective work in there to really determine what the story is. So that's it. It's a bad chrome job. Who would have thought? That's it. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, you're gonna get us a copyright strike, man.